Welcome to Jackal DIY and Tech. In today's video, I will not be making any review, which I thought that that would be my first video on the subject of 3D printing, but instead I'll focus on Bamboo Lab and its latest update. Now I was looking at some 3D printers, these were just three of them, but I don't think that I'll be looking at Bamboo Lab. And that is because of this post. So this is the official Bamboo Lab blog. They have some firmware update that introduces new authorization control. And point being, the control. Now what is the issue with this? Well, firstly, anyone that updates their old device will now need to be authorized in order to actually print with one exception and most of the functionality will be gated or locked if you don't comply with the software update. So what are the critical operations that require authorization? Basically you're asking, hey dad, can I do this? So binding and unbinding the printer, which I do not know what it is. So maybe this is a good thing, maybe. Initiating remote video access. So you have a webcam that you remote access to view if the print is going okay. I do not understand why this is the case, especially because if I remember correctly, with Bamboo Lab, it only worked if you used the Bamboo Cloud, which is another no-no in my opinion. So this is not something that you would want. Performing firmware upgrades. What would be the downside if this was not in? Allowing people to downgrade because they don't want the authorization. Well, I guess jokes on them because you actually can't downgrade even without the authorization update. This is another big one, initiating a print job via LAN or cloud mode. So same as with the camera, I believe you need the cloud mode and why you cannot use the LAN without the authorization, I also do not know. If you buy something, you should be able to use it how you want. And lastly, controlling the motion system, temperature fans, AMS settings, calibrations, etc. So Basically everything is locked behind the authorization, with a few exceptions. What are those? Sending the status information from the printer, using the MQTT protocol to push the status to home assistant. Awesome, you cannot do anything with this, it's just the status. You can start the print job, but only using the SD card. Awesome, so you have to be physically present. And then you have general operations outside of the listed authorization controls, which I honestly do not know what those are. So in essence, you cannot do anything that needs controlling of your machine. Besides starting the print using the SD card. But it doesn't stop just there. What you will find is, you will find this section Upgrading the firmware will prevent third-party software or hardware from controlling the printer, which in this case also includes any kind of slicer. And that's not all, they also have future implications, which means that all future Bamboo Lab printer models will integrate the authorization control technology as a standard to ensure the highest levels of user security and printer protection moving forward. However, throughout our joint efforts and cooperation, we believe we can improve the security, quality and user experience of Bamboo Lab's 3D printer products and services. Though they do not mention who the joint effort and cooperation is being done with, I can guarantee you it's not the users. And I'll show you that just in a bit. But what does this entail when it comes to the update? Well, if you check the term of service, Bamboo Lab deserves the right at their sole discretion to update, change or replace any part of the TOS by posting updates and changes to their website and it is the user's responsibility to check the website periodically for the changes. And if you just continue to use the website, you basically say I agree and accept any changes that they made. Now this has got a lot of attention. 
mostly bad ones. So if you go to say Trust Pilot, Bamboo Lab, then you can see ones to reviews, 61%. Now admittedly, mostly people that have negative experience will post, but this tells a lot. But also if you go to the Bamboo Lab Reddit, you will have a lot of posts in recent days that are negative. One thing that was funny, but still kind of sad, in the direction that Bamboo Lab may be heading, is this one. It's making fun of HP, but this is quite a possibility. So what do they mean? In recent time, the filament spools come with RFID chips. Those RFID chips are programmed so that you don't have to input the color and the type of the filament manually, so it detects that automatically and you can just print away. But supposedly Bamboo Lab has gone a step further with the RFID chips. They use a different kind of protocol which would enable Bamboo Lab to basically lock them out or lock anyone else out of their ecosystem, just like HP does, which means that you would have to buy specifically the filament spools from Bamboo Lab in order for the 3D printer to actually work, which is what this image represents. Now that could be still all good if you would consider, like Bamboo Lab is considering themselves as an apple of 3D printing, but that is not the case with what this person experienced. Basically, they had a really rough time, they just wanted the printer to work, press the button and do its thing. The printer did work for a little while, but then it just shut off and they couldn't get it to work. The support was of no help, at least they did not provide a solution that would be satisfactory to the customer. Now if Bamboo Lab thinks they are Apple, the support should also be that way. So what does that mean? If someone does not have experience with 3D printing, just like I don't have any, I would expect the support to be a little bit more hands on, not just say what to do because I have no experience what buttons to push. Just as the example that this person gave, if you buy a car, something's wrong with it, well you don't want to mess with a new car. We'll take it back to the dealership and have them fix it. Now is there a silver lining to all of this? I would say kind of if you're a DIY guy, otherwise just avoid Bamboo Lab until all of this blows up and we have some resolution, but based on what they have for the future implications, if this does not change and also the update does not change, then I would say avoid Bamboo Lab, unless you want to be pigeonholed into their ecosystem. Now also you have to take into consideration that the support is really lackluster, at least based on all of the feedback that you can read. I thought that the company was actually good, but I guess that when things work you don't read all of the bad stuff, but they do have quite a long list of the support being bad. As you can see. Now for the DIY community, you have this. Now the X1C is the first printer that received this firmware update. The other printers will follow, but as you can see by the title, it has been jailbroken. So if you want, go to X1 Plus Community Bamboo Lab Firmware a win for everyone question mark video and watch it to find out more. But where does that leave us, the buyers who want to 3D print but don't actually own one? Well, at the moment, I think Bamboo Lab is out of the question. The KD4 Plus was decent, but it had some issue, at least for the people in the US. The issue was something with the power supply not being meant for 110 volts, or is it 120 volts? And the Creality K2, I think it just came out, so it's still not clear what all of the issues it may have. Now you still have the Prusa, which is expensive, 
and what is it? Maybe any cubic also has something, but I'm basically looking for something that is enclosed, possibly has a heater as well, because I do have some humidity, and it is quite cold, and also I do not like all of the noise that may come from the 3D printer. So if anyone has any budget suggestions, I do not need multi-printing, uh, at most I would use the multi-prints like AMS, CMS, whatever they have, I would use the same type of color and filament. As for the price ranges, I guess below 500, below or around 1000 and below 1500. I think those are the ranges, lower obviously being better, so if anyone has any comments and suggestions, leave them down below. And I'll see you in the next video.